Hi folks, Randy Richard, Randy Richard in the shop, fellow YouTube machinist, reached out and said, hey, I gotta make a brand, can you CNC machine the negative of my logo, RR in the shop, into a piece of brass? So let's do it. So what are the takeaways? Two things, one, dialing in small tools and using those on the Tormach 440. The second is progressively finer, adaptive rest machining in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Mantle. Maybe we cut something? Let's go. So the trick to making this part is a 1 32nd end mill to finish it up. But before we get the part loaded up, we need to check tool run out. You need to own this tool. Tense indicator, this is the Mitsutoya one, and the Noga with the adjustment in the base. This is so critical to walking up because each tick mark is one ten thousandth of an inch and you need to get it. It doesn't even have to be on zero actually, but it's easier to see where you're at. I like to open the spindle door. You'll see you're getting all kinds of deflection from me pushing the machine around as I do this, which aren't forces normally seen in the cutting operation. I also ding my spindle door, which makes it difficult to open. Okay, so I'm gonna gently try to walk this tool around. And there's, and there's two tenths, four tenths, back to zero. So I would rather it be three tenths um, but I'm okay with four tenths. We did dial this in offline. Card here to the video on the Lego bazooka mold where we talked about dialing in these tools. It's really important, not only for small tools, but it's really important to your Fusion 360 or your feeds and speeds chip load per tooth. We're taking a really light chip load per tooth. We need to make sure it's cutting relatively even on both sides of the tool as she rotates around. I'm good with this. Let's set up our workpiece. First up, we've got to narrow this periphery down to the 175 diameter. We're starting with 1 and 7 eighths stock. 2D contour with a 1 8 inch end mill, giving it all the RPMs. We've got 10,000, 1.5 thou per tooth. That's 30 inches a minute, no problem at all. We are doing some narrow step overs, 30 thou roughing passes, three of those to bring it into size. What I like about this, folks, you're making a real chip. Use your tools, push your tools. No problem here, it's brass. Everyone's a hero in brass, but you're making a real chip. Even at 30 inches a minute, it's a good chip, makes me happy. Next up, adaptive. You'll notice I locked these tool paths or protected them. That's because I didn't want it to lose the, uh, the generation of the tool path when I closed the file or saved it. Because this takes a while to generate because there's a lot going on. 10,000 RPMs, one thou per tooth, which is 20 inches per minute. What's important? 30 thou optimal load, leaving two thou of radial stock, and one thou of tolerance. Why do I mention tolerance? Well, the takeaway here is using progressively smaller tools. And let's do a quick timeout. Who here has ever done an adaptive? Let's say we gotta make this part. Quarter inch end mill blows out everything except this little nook that it can't really get into. So you set up a second adaptive under geometry. You check rest machining and you change the source to from previous operation. What does that mean? It means it's gonna to look to only machine the remaining stock. That's what apparently rest stands for, remaining stock, um, based on the previous operations. And that's great, it does it. 
but why the heck does it also do these little whisper cuts? There's only one here in this demo, but I often see them all over the place. The reason, your tolerance plus your stock to leave from the former operation has to be less than the radial stock to leave in this operation. If that sounds like a mouthful, take a look. I added this to our speeds and feeds worksheet file that we have, link in the video description for Patreon members. The first operation, if I have 1,000 tolerance and I have 2,000 stock to leave, what does that mean? It means the maximum material that can actually be left on that part is 3 thousandths of an inch. Why? Because I only have 1,000 tolerance and we know we're leaving 2,000. So that means it could be up to 3 thousandths of an inch. What that means is on op two, if I'm doing this rest machine with progressively smaller tools, I need to leave a minimum of three and a half thou stock to leave the radial value, this guy right here, to avoid those whisper cuts. That's the solution. I don't like that because what it means is I, as I use progressively smaller tools, I've got to increase my stock to leave and that's counterintuitive from a workflow standpoint, but that's the answer, at least for now. So again, you can see here in the fixed version, same adaptive, the smaller tool is only focused on that little pocket because I bumped up the radial stock to leave. Fusion 360 and the Tormach 440, I think do a great job, especially of these, of the adaptive tool pass and getting into little nooks and crannies. It's a small part, which makes the machine look really fast, but it is. We've got our no engagement feed rate set to the maximum of the machine. And as it gets into these small cavities, which we did by making the minimum cutting radius really small, two thousandths of an inch, that's gonna get in as tight as it possibly can with that tool. Pretty darn good machine movement, in my opinion. So here I made a mistake. I super flied it by hand, by just jogging across, which is what I often do, but I accidentally still had some stock modeled in my setup. So I right click on the operation, edit, under stock. I've got it offset by 10 thousandths of an inch. So Fusion does what it's told. It recognized that I need to then, in that adaptive operation, come through and machine down the top face, which didn't have to happen because it was fine, in fact, better, probably super fly. So the worst thing we did was wasted some time and some, some, you know, cut some more material than we had to. Switching down to the next size smaller tool, this is a three flute, three sixteenths end mill, 10,000 RPMs, seven tenths uh, thou per two, so 21 inches a minute, which is, which is pretty fast, uh, relatively medium chip load, I'll call it small optimal load here i care much more about completing the operation without breaking the tool and less about maximizing a uh, material removal or maximizing how fast we get this all done you want flat area detection checked as a general rule in your 3d adaptives just period and the height geometry here is only 0.05 inches it's, we've got our maximum step down is 0.1875 so we're doing this basically in one depth of cut as you can see here the camera makes it look like this tool is sticking out really far. It's really not, although we do have it sticked out a little bit further than uh, we, had, we should simply to make uh, for better video footage. But again, choke up on your tools. On the flip side, again, these 1 16th inch tools, they're actually pretty rugged. Believe it or not, when you've got the right feeds and speeds, you can take real cuts and make real chips. Just because it's a small tool doesn't mean you should baby it. Anything below 30 thou is where you do have to get into micro machining and be more conscious of some pretty peculiar uh, feeds and speeds. And I would really rely on the folks at Harvey Tool for their speeds and feeds on that micro machining stuff. 1 8 inch is done, 1 16th is done. Finally, we'll wrap up with a 3D adaptive with a 1 32nd inch end mill. That's about 32 thou, so we're right at the cusp of what I would say is micro machining. 10,000 RPMs, half a thou feed per tooth, which is still 15 inches a minute. I suspect some people would have said that's fast, but remember, you've got 10,000 RPMs, you've got to maintain a real chip load. The leading edge, the cutting edge of that tool isn't going to actually be able to dig underneath. Think about a backhoe scooping into dirt. It wants to cut in. Only a five thousandth of an inch width of cut or optimal load, and we are doing this one in two depths of cut. 
mostly I think because it's getting inside of some of the uh, letters here and I wanted to again just not break the tool. The whole operation is only 10 minutes so I wasn't too worried about if I had to make 50 of these I would, I would focus a lot more on how much harder or further I could push it. The problem though is that even using a 132nd tool wasn't small enough to get inside of the S's and the E's and, and the insides of the R. So I talked to Randy about this and I said, are you okay trying a little hack? And we'll see if this works, which is to use a chamfer tool and to walk around those edges to give us hopefully some profile or some insignia. Now remember, this is a brand. I don't know what he's branding, but well, I hope it works. If it doesn't, we'll have to get smaller tools and finish it up that way. And finally, a quick edge brake chamfer using the chamfer offset 40 thousandths of an inch. And we're done. Off to Randy. Check out Randy's channel. We'll put a card here to if and when he puts up a video, he's going to use his lathe to turn the backside of this. I think thread it and put it on a branding iron shaft. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.